Hey everybody, this is Jimny from Jimny Woodworks. Um, I'm just doing a quick follow-up video, or it's really a set of slides, um, on an issue that came up after I did a review on my new Powermatic 2820 EVS drill press. Um, after uh, I didn't catch uh, an issue in my review that a uh, viewer pointed out to me, and then when I went back and checked mine, I noticed uh, it also had the same issue. So the table on this drill press has a 90 degree, well, it's actually a zero degree position, so the perpendicular or horizontal position of the table with respect to the chuck has a stop in it. Um, and you're, you unscrew that stop, and then you can rotate the table each direction quite a bit. But that, that stop is supposed to be set, um, you know, the it's basically a, a, supposed to be a tight tolerance pin to hold it in position, but my table had at least a degree or two of slop, in, and uh, at least one other viewer reported even more than that. Um, so when we looked at it, it's really not a very uh, good design. They, they uh, kind of machined it with a lot of slop in it. Um, and so just videos how I fixed it um, to make it a uh, much uh, tighter tolerance so you don't have to fine-tune it every time you try to put it back into its horizontal position. So in this slide you can see the underside of the table. Um, there's a large nut um, that tightens the table uh, to the uh, column riser um, and then there's a uh, kind of a, a bolt with a yoke um, that screws in on the bottom um, and, the, and it screws in about a quarter inch or so uh, and engages into the back piece um, to hold it in the horizontal position. Now in this picture I've removed the table completely from the uh, uh, riser the adjustable riser that lifts, the, or the table lift, I guess I should call it. Um, and you can see in the center is the large bolt that that tightens the table and in its uh, whatever angle you have set. And the bottom hole, uh, it's, a, it's a 10 millimeter bolt that engages into that, is the one that's supposed to lock this table in uh, at 90 degrees. Well, I keep saying 90 degrees, but it's actually perpendicular to the uh, to the axis of the drill chuck. Um, so this is a drill, a hole drilled into the casting and then that bolt I showed on the previous slide screws into this. Now this is the table removed um, and you can see the, the same uh, large bolt that tightens uh, the table that I talked about on the previous slide and then you can see the tip of the locking bolt uh, protruding um, past the uh, round fitting that mates with the table lift. Um, and so this um, this slide and the previous slide are the two pieces that mate together in that. And the problem is that the uh, machined end of this, as you can see protruding here, um, is smaller than the hole that's drilled in the uh, table lift and it and not just by a little bit um, it, it seems to vary um, the viewer that pointed this out to me originally said his wasn't even a round hole it was sort of an oblong uh, um, thing that seemed to be just kind of hogged out so that this would fit in there uh, so I don't know if they have a, a problem with the machining on this or what um, and then in some cases had to just kind of um, hog it out a little bit to get it to fit or, or what, but at least um, in my case and at least one other just uh, wasn't a very uh, precise fit between the pin and the hole. I did try to contact Powermatic twice about this. Uh, they didn't respond either time, which is pretty disappointing for the quote unquote gold standard of woodworking tools. So um, that's taken them down a notch in, the, in my opinion. Um, they used to always have good customer service and I couldn't even get a response from them. 
um, off of the customer service on the web page. So that's not very good. So let's go into uh, how I, I fix this uh, on this table. So the first thing I did was to uh, mount the table, uh, tighten it down, and then using I use a CNC tramming tool that's shown here in the picture, uh, but you could use a you know a straight dowel rod, for example, and a square or whatever method you want to get the table uh, to be as perpendicular to the axis of the chalk as you can. Um, the, the goal here is to get it in the the best position you can for the zero degree setting, uh, lock it down, uh, and then we can proceed to um, do the rest of the procedure. Um, so I, I happen to have a CNC tramming tool that works really well, but use whatever you have to to, to get this to be um, square to the chuck. Okay, as I mentioned, uh, on the previous slide, we got the table uh, set um, perpendicular to the drill chuck axis. Um, and what I did was I removed the uh, bolt that locks it in that position completely. And you can see I've inserted a 2164 uh, drill. But, um, that is a pretty snug fit to the threads of the 10 millimeter uh, hole. Uh, threaded hole in this casting um, so obviously I hooked a, a drill to it as well to drill this out but this uh, bit is nicely guided by the threads um, and so I just um, drilled that out and so that basically reams out the um, receiving hole in the mating casting for this to give me a, a precisely centered hole with respect to the threads when the table is in its correct zero degree position. Now I manufactured a new locking bolt uh, that would tightly fit the new hole that I drilled. Um, so this requires the end to be bigger than the original one. So I threw away the, the threaded part of the original one. I kept the handle for it to be used that here and you can see it here. So I went, I just bought a standard 10 millimeter uh, bolt with 1.5 uh, millimeter thread um, and turned down the end. You can see about three eighths of an inch here that's turned down on the end to uh, match as snugly as I can the uh, 2164 drill bit hole that's in the casting. So I, I turned it down slowly until I could just insert it into that cast, uh, casting hole that I drilled. Uh, and then I just flattened out the end of the, of the other end and drilled a hole in it so that the yoke of the handle could fit around it and used a uh, screw that peened it over and made it into a rivet essentially like the original design was. Um, and then I, um, I had a bolt that was long enough so I could put a couple of uh, uh, nuts on there, 10 millimeter nuts, and, and lock them in place to use it as a, so I can adjust where the shoulders, you just want that uh, uh, to protrude out of the casing, um, but not to get the large part of the thread to come out. You don't want it to push into the casing wall. You just want this to, uh, the, the tip of this to insert into the hole, um, and then a couple of washers uh, just to make it. Uh, turn easier when you're tightening it. So this is what the uh, new locking bolt looks like, screwed into the table and the table was removed. Um, I had the table off because it was easier to uh, feel how tight that uh, bolt was as I was turning down the end. Uh, this way I could turn it a little bit and then try it out in the hole of the uh, lift mechanism on the column without having to screw it in and out of the um, tabletop each time. Um, but also I wanted to show um, two other things. They're minor, but um, I wasn't real pleased with them. It's, you can s sort of see the uh, casting is not... Um, 
machine um, perpendicular to either one of the bolts, uh, the big locking bolt um, or the um, um, zero degree uh, locking bolt. So on the big bolt that, that tightens the or holds the table to the lift mechanism, um, you can see the two large washers had the little bit of uh, JB weld oozing out of them. That's because I uh, put the washers at a little bit of an angle. I put a spacer in there and filled it with JB weld and let it uh, cure. And then I glued that to the assembly. And uh, that uh, made the surface that the large bolt head tightens to uh, perpendicular to the bolt so that it wasn't gouging in on just the top edge. And uh, I didn't do anything uh, to fix that same effect on the locking bolt because it doesn't really need to be super tight. It really just is inserting the, the tip of that bolt into the hole in the, the mating casing. So um, you can see the two <clears throat> silver colored washers there uh, actually have that of fairly large gap um, on one side of the nut and not the other because I didn't fix it there. But I thought it was kind of important for the big locking nut because uh, you really want that you know, to secure pretty tightly uh, to the column and you just kind of bolt this together. Otherwise, uh, you know, there's always going to be a little bit of, of minor movement possible in this because you can never get that pin to be perfectly tight. So, um, you know, I went from maybe one or more than one degree of possible movement when I would push on the right or the left of the table down to um, with that tramming tool, maybe five thousandths of, of an inch movement in each direction, which isn't too bad. You know, it's good enough for woodworking for sure. Um, but in either case, you, you still want to be able to lock this big uh, bolt down pretty tightly so the table doesn't move around when you tap on it or set heavy things on it. So uh, having a perpendicular surface is, is really uh, helpful for that and uh, keeps the bolt head from gouging into the casting and stuff. Too. So that's it. It was pretty simple. Um, again, kind of disappointing that uh, PowerMac didn't do a better job with this, this feature on the table. And the, in my opinion, even more disappointing is it didn't respond to this. Uh, it's a relatively easy fix if this is important to you. Overall, this doesn't prevent you from getting it um, exactly set right. Uh, the, the pin really isn't required at all. Um, the, the biggest problem without having the pin um, be a tight fit is that um, you know you can set something on a table fairly heavy after you've got it adjusted well. And, and knock it out of adjustment. And this pin um, helps to prevent that um, because even though that bolt is large and you can tighten it down pretty hard, it's still a pretty smooth machine surface between the table and the lifter. Um, it doesn't, you know, it's a pretty wide table too, so tapping on one side or the other or dropping something heavy on it um, does uh, cause it to move uh, relatively easily if there's no locking pin to hold it. Down.